Is there any information you require? Most of our guests have quite a lot to ask me, but I won't insist. Anything, anyhow, as regards to the toothbrush, the electric bell, or that thing on the mantel shelf. This gentleman can tell you anything you want to know as well as I can. We've had a little chat to him. Florence. Did you hear? I asked you about Florence. Where is she? I haven't had her yet. I see. That's the way it works, is it? Orchard by separation. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you won't be getting anywhere. Florence was a tiresome little fool, and I shan't miss her in the least. I beg your pardon. Who do you suppose I am? You? Why, the torturer, of course. That's a good one. Too common for words. I'm the torturer. So you came in, had a look at me, and thought I was uh, one of the staff. Of course, it's a silly fellow, so he should have introduced us. Torturer, indeed. I'm Joseph Garçon, journalist and man of letters by profession. And as we're both in the same boat, so to speak, may I ask you, Mrs. I'm not married. Not Mrs. Right. Well, that's a stop anyhow. Well, now that we've broken the ice, do you really think I look like a torturer? And, by the way, how does one recognize torturers when one sees them? Evidently, with ideas on the subject. They look frightened. Frightened? But how ridiculous! Of course, should they be frightened of their victims? Laugh away. I know what I'm talking about. I've often watched my face in the glass. In the glass? Beastly. Everything in the least resembling glass. <laughs> Anyhow, I can assure you that I'm not frightened. Not that I take my position lightly. I realize it's rather too much. But I'm not afraid. That's your affair. Must one be here all the time, or can you take a stroll outside now and then? The door's locked. Oh, that's too bad. I can quite understand that it avoids you having me. And I, too, well, quite frankly, I'd rather be alone. I want to think things out, you know, set my life in order. One does that better by oneself. But I'm sure we'll manage to put alone together somehow. I'm no talker. I don't move much. In fact, I'm a peaceful sort of fellow. Only, if I may venture on a suggestion, we should make a point of being extremely courteous to each other. That will ease the situation we're supposed to. I'm not polite. Then I must be polite for two. Twisting it about all this time is grotesque. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware of it. That's just what I reproach you with. There you are! You talk about politeness, but you didn't even try to control your face. Remember, you have no right to inflict the sight of your fear on me. How about you? Aren't you afraid? How would the use be? There was some point in being afraid before, while one still had hope. There's no more hope, but it's still before. We haven't yet begun the so. That's so. Well, what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm waiting.
We'd be too horrible for words. I mean, fail to move any speedy <laughs> Would you prefer mine? That claret color one you mean? That's very spooky. The pretty, no. I don't think it would be so much better. What's the good of worrying, anyhow? We just have to take what comes to us, and I'll speak with the green one. The only one that minds what I think is the gentleman's. Did you hear, Mr. Garcia? Oh, the sofa, you mean? So sorry. Please, take it, madam. Okay. Well, as we're to leave together, I suggest we better introduce ourselves. My name's Rigal. And I'm in Serrano. Very pleased to meet you. Joseph Vassan. Do you require me any longer? No, you can go. I'll bring you when I want. You're very pretty. I wish we had some flowers to welcome you in. Flowers? Yes, I love flowers. Only they say something to do with them. Oh, stop. Oh, well. The great thing is to keep as cheerful as we can. Cheerful? Of course, you two are. Yes, last week. What about you? I'm quite recent. Yesterday. As a matter of fact, the ceremony is not quite over. The wind's blowing my sister's veil all over the place. She's trying her best to cry. Come on, dear. Make another effort. That's better. Two tears. Two little tears are twinkling under the black veil. Oh dear, what a sight all of us is. She's not crying, and I don't really blame her. Tears always messes one's face, you know. Did it hurt much? No, I was half conscious mostly. What was it? Pneumonia. Well, it's over now. They're leaving the cemetery. Goodbye! Goodbye. My husband stayed at home, plus trying to be free. Poor man. What about the gas stove? And you, Mr. Nursing? Twelve bullets through my chest. Ugh. Sorry. I fear I'm not good company among the dead. Please, please don't use that word. So, so crude. In terribly bad taste, really. Doesn't mean much, anyhow. If we absolutely got to mention this, this state of things, I suggest we call ourselves, wait, Obstantees. Have you been absent for long? About a month. Where do you come from? From Rio. Well, I'm from Paris. Have you anyone left down there? Yes, my wife. She's waiting at the entrance of the barracks. She comes there every day, but they won't let her in. She's trying to be between the bars. She doesn't yet know I'm absent, but she suspects it. Now she's going away. She's wearing a black dress. So much the better, she won't need to change. She isn't crying, but she never did cry anyhow. It's a bright, sunny day. She's like a black shadow creeping down the empty street. Those big, tragic eyes of hers that modern look they always had. Oh, how she got on my nerves. Smoke. 
used to like living among men in their shirt sleeves. Well, in that case, our tastes differ. That's all he proves. What about you? Do you like men in their shirt sleeves? Oh, I don't much care for men anyway. <laughs> really? I, I, I can't imagine why they put us three together. It just doesn't make any sense. What's that you said? I'm just looking at you two and thinking that we're going to live together and it's so absurd. I expect him to meet old friends or relatives. Yes, a charming old friend with a hole in the middle of his face. Oh, yes, me too. He dance the time was so divine. I'm not professional. But why? Why don't all people wish to be put together? Yeah, pure fluke, I should say. <laughs> they lodge folks as they can in the order of their coming. <laughs> why are you laughing? Because you amuse me with your as if they left any of this to chance. But I suppose you have to reassure yourself somehow. I wonder now, do you think we might have met each other at some point in our lives? Never. I should have forgotten you. Or perhaps we have friends in common? I wonder if you knew that Dufois was Simon? Not likely. But everyone went to their parties. What was their job? Well, they don't do anything, but they have these lovely houses in the country and hosts of people visit. I didn't. I was a post office clerk. Ah, yes. Of course. And you, We've never met. I always lived in Rio. See.